everybody and welcome to the Salmon Ranch Cooking Show. I'm Jim Salmon and this is my good cooking buddy Tim Mixick. How you doing? And uh, today we're going to cook a brisket for you low and slow on the Komodo Joe uh, at about 225 uh, to 250 for 12 to 15 hours and then we're going to plate that brisket and serve it up on some great rolls and and then we're cooking a, uh, some chili peppers in the chili grill and some Hungarian peppers. We're building some cherry bourbon barbecue sauce right here on the, oh, boy, on the ranch patio. That. Don't we love that? That is delicious. Mm. Timmy's going to, you tell him what you're going to do. I'm going to make a cornbread, a cowboy cornbread with uh, jalapeno peppers and corn mm. and uh, inside a Dutch oven. So we're going to show you how to do that. And I like all that honey that's dribbled out oh, there. Yeah. Oh, my that's, gosh. That's Tim's world famous for his cornbread. We're also going to do a blackberry cobbler in the Dutch oven here. And... Uh. Uh, uh, some salt potatoes, and we'll put it all up on our plate and serve it right up here to all the wranglers here at the Salmon Ranch. How you doing? We have ourselves a brisket here, about 16 pounds or so, and uh, we're going to cook this bad boy low and slow, about 225 to 250 on our Komodo Joe ceramic grill for maybe 12 to 15 hours. And I'll tell you one thing, just because those boys and girls down in Texas have more cows than we do up here in western New York, doesn't mean they know any more about cooking a brisket. This is going to be the finest cooked meal you'll get away from home anywhere. So right now we're going to start, and uh, we have two points of our brisket here. We have the flat and we have the point. And we're going to take all this hard cap fat and lard off of there, yep. uh, except for about a quarter of an inch or so, right? Yeah, you want to... So, you want to trim it down so when it renders, you're going to have that nice bark left. Now, I, uh, there's some big chunks in here, too, that uh, really serve no purpose uh, when you're cooking your brisket. So you have to, it, it, the best thing to do is get that out of there. There's really enough uh, marbling, normal marbling and whatever in a brisket to, to get what you want when it renders down. And you want that tender, juicy brisket. Now we're going to plate this later on and have a whole bunch of folks down here to help us uh, enjoy this brisket. But uh, right now we're going to get it ready and Tim and I are cutting off as much of this fat. We're going to leave about a quarter of an inch or so. Yep. And then we're going to hit this with our own Salmon Ranch Trail Dust Rub here that we use at the ranch. Now uh, there's, there's many different cuts of brisket, believe it or not, or qualities of brisket. Now, if you go to one of those big box supermarkets, you don't know what you're going to get. Um, now, we got this brisket from a local hometown grocery store with a real butcher, Hagedorn's Market. It's in Webster, New York. And uh, we went there and we ordered up the brisket. These are black Angus briskets. Uh, and That's the finest meat you can get. It's the finest meat in the world. And, and one of the big things about going to your butcher is you know where it came from. That's the, the very few big box stores have butchers in the store so we're uh we're gonna flip this guy over here and get the rest of it oh look at all that fat on there huh yeah so we'll, this is uh, this is the side you really want to try to get to down to a quarter maybe just a hair under there you go all right what do you think uh that's just about it all right um yeah well, just yeah, let's just a touch more over here. Oh, okay. All right. We'll smooth that out. Tim's a perfectionist. We want to—he always <laughs> want to make sure we're doing everything right. And any any time I need to know anything about timing, I'm not much on math. Mac, I call him, and he's got it right down to the to the wire. I got so it we're right good. there. All right. So we'll flip this over. Sort of. There we go. And now we'll hit this up with a rub, and then we'll rub it in. This. This is a uh, combination of probably 20 ingredients. And one of the things you want to do is make sure it's rubbed right into the meat. Because when that brisket comes off, or, or we wrap it about, what, six hours in or yep. so, six you hours. want that, you want a nice crusty bark. bark on the end of that. They call that meat candy. Yeah. You can't use too much rub. All right, up next, we're going to take this bad boy over to the Komodo Joe and get it on the grill. Jim and 
Tim, we're back and we're going to take our brisket and put it on the Komodo Joe here. Uh, we also have a water tray in the bottom to keep things moist. And I don't know if it does any good, but I've always had a, a bottle of beer and I pour that in there too. And I don't know if it does anything, but it makes me feel good too. So we'll just pour that beer right into that water tray. If and I hopefully everything will stay nice and moist while we're cooking this brisket for up to 15 hours. So, all right, Timmy, let's get this bad boy on here. We yeah, want we'll the fat up. side up. Fat side up. There we, we go. Just roll it on there. And all right, there we go. Yep. Perfect. There we go. Um, and we'll put our probe in there. Now, it's always a good idea to keep an eye, uh, keep an eye on what the temperature is. And we're looking for between 205 and 210 uh, when our brisket's done. Now we're gonna come back here and grab this after about six hours and then we're gonna wrap it. And that keeps all the juices in and helps it render uh, all that Would nice you, fat right on through. You right wanna there? get the bark formed and then at that point when the outside is done, you're wrapping it to preserve all the moisture on the inside so it just keeps continuing to cook and stay juicy. There you go. Yep. Okay, let's close this down. And we'll set our timer. And we're on to the next thing here on the Salmon Ranch Cooking Show. Now, Tim, this has got to be my favorite, one of my favorite parts of this whole cooking show. The appetizers. Is doing the appetizers. <laughs> when, when you're, you know, when you go to somebody's house or whatever and you bring the best appetizer in the world, there's all the people standing around you. They want to know yeah. how you did it and, you know. And they're so, usually hungry, too. <laughs> they're starving. <laughs> what we do here at the ranch is we grow uh, Hungarian peppers, we grow uh, jalapeno peppers, and an occasional habanero. And we take the uh, jalapenos and we cut the tops off, like so. And then we take a, a corer and we take the webbing and the seeds out. Although you don't have to do that. If you, if you want to uh, leave, them hot. Leave, them, leave them as hot as you know, the sun, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, we take the seeds out here because I want everybody to be able to enjoy them and some people don't like over the top hot. Um, but even still, with the seeds and the webbing out, what is it, one every, every six or so has got some real heat oh, yeah. to it, right? Yep. right? Those are the catatonic ones. <laughs> now the good thing about cooking chilies is that you can you could put anything you can think of in here. You can put fruit like uh, chunks of pineapple, nuts, uh, today we're going to do some cheese, some cream cheese, bacon, and shrimps, uh, pieces of shrimp. But anything you could think of, you can it's put like in It's like lasagna. Yeah. Whatever your heart desires is for at that time, you know. So I always start out, and this is one of the things you have to do with your hands. So don't worry about it. It's going to cook and nobody's going to get sick. So what you do is you take and put some sprinkle, very, very sharp cheddar cheese in there. And then you take a hunk of shrimp and push that down in there. This is so easy, a baby could do it. And, you, and then you take some uh, fresh cream cheese and you cap the top of it with cream cheese like so. But again, you can put anything you want in here. Fish. Today we're doing shrimp. Pineapple, anchovy, scallion. Yeah, anchovies, oh that's um. great. And there's a million kinds of cream cheese you can put in there too. Right, there's jalapeno cream cheese you can yeah, use. We've yes, done that uh, before yep. here at the ranch. Now once you get to this point, uh, they're all nice and capped off and sealed with cream cheese. And then... Uh, there's the most important part. I always take and hit it with, before I put the bacon on, I always hit it with a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. Then we take our piece of bacon. And that really finishes it off. Pit that off the top and it just, take a, take a toothpick and run that through the top. Run that through the side so it doesn't, uh, once in a while they'll shrink a little bit and if you have too small of a chili, it'll slip through the hole there and then you're, you're, you're still eating it because you're scraping it up, but because uh, nobody's gonna waste it. And those chili grills are fantastic because they just hold them right there. You can set them on the grill, and that's that. And then uh, we'll finish that off with a little bit more fresh cracked pepper, black pepper. 
Now these you have over here are a little bit different, aren't they? Now those are different. different. Those are Hungarians, and this particular variety is pretty wide. They're thicker. So you it really, they wouldn't fit in the holes of the chili grill. So you cut them in half, and what we did on these were we mixed cream cheese with fresh breakfast sausage, and then we laid some extra sharp white cheese on top, a strip of fresh tomato from the ranch garden, bacon, and fresh cracked black pepper. And those really afford you to add much more stuffing as well. These are delicious, but those, you know, there's, there's variation on both of them. Yep. So we're going to put the chilies in the Komodo Joe and cook them down for supper. Well, we're back, and there's nothing that goes with a brisket better than cornbread. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a cowboy cornbread. Uh, we're going to have corn and jalapenos in it, and we're going to drizzle it with some wildflower honey at the topping. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to prep, uh, just to show you how to prep a jalapeno quick. Um, I'm not using the core, but I'm going to split it. Get all the seeds out because a lot of people don't like the heat. Don't forget to rub your eyes after you touch yeah. that. No. <laughs> jalapenos. You know, have you, ever, have you ever are, done that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> jalapenos are great, though, because you never know what you're going to get. Some of them are steaming hot. Some are medium. Some don't, right. don't have any heat at all. I've even heard it said that sometimes a bell pepper could surprise you. Yeah, especially so if they're know. grown in the garden next to the jalapenos. Yeah, a little cross-pollination or something. There you go. So we're just going to slice these up real quick and get them chunked. Mm. And I do have the majority of them already done. So Could you please hurry up? I'm hungry. <laughs> this will be worth the wait, trust well, you me. You know I don't miss too many meals. So. Okay, we'll just line these up and get them chopped and chunked. And <laughs> mm. And that's that. So we'll toss them in here. There you go. Okay, so in the bowl, what we're going to have is we got a dry mix, which is flour, cornmeal, baking soda, and a little bit of sugar and salt. So we're going to start with that. Get that in our bowl. Uh, we're going to add a third a cup of butter. You can use vegetable oil if you want, but you know, I go for one of the three B's. But, yeah. So butter always makes <laughs> everything it touches taste better. Without That's right. A doubt. Uh, next ingredient, we're gonna put in two thirds of a cup of milk. Be careful not to overdo it. And one egg. One egg. One one whole egg. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Just drop it right in there. There you go. <laughs> I, I take it out of the shell, though, if you want to. Ooh, this is okay. already looking good. All right, so we get that egg yolk broken up. Tim's known all make over sure. the country for his cornbread. All over the country. Oh, I thought you were going to say breaking up egg yolks. <laughs> that too. We'll just get this yeah. all mixed. Ooh, yeah. Uh, just takes a minute because as the flour starts soaking it up, it'll it'll move along here. There's nothing that says summer and brisket and, and pulled pork and all those great things you cook that we cook here at the ranch. There's nothing that says summer better than fresh cornbread. Well, this is some special stuff because we're not just cooking it in a pan. We're going to do this in cast iron. In a Dutch in oven. In a Dutch yeah. oven over the coals. So this will be interesting. Just a few things you need to know about cooking in a Dutch oven. And we're going to show you how to do it without burning up what you're trying to create here and I'll tell you at the other end of this this is gonna be awesome okay so in here I've got my chopped chili I've got corn and uh, I've had the corn sitting on a little piece of paper towel in the bottom here to try to get some of the moisture out because the last thing you want is uh, you know there's a lot of people who have difficulty with cornbread they say it comes out dry right but when you're doing it in the Dutch oven you're in a sealed container so you actually have to be more careful about it being too moist at the end. So that's what we're working at there. Take some of that corn juice out of it. That's right. There you go. So that's our batter, and uh, we're ready to go over to the fire. Okay, let's head over to the fire and see how Tim's going to put this on the Dutch oven. And we're back at the fire pit. What we're going to do is we're going to get our Dutch oven established and get our batter in it and get it covered. Now with the Dutch oven, you have to count the coals based on the diameter. If it's a diameter of 10, then you use 20 coals and you want to split 
three to one. You want one on the bottom and three on top because they actually cook from the top. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to get our five coals established, get our Dutch oven over there, and start this bacon. Now this is the this is the most tasty cornbread you'll ever have in the world. You can have cornbread anywhere, regular old everyday cornbread, but nothing tastes like Timmy's cornbread. We get that on there. Of course, you gotta you gotta oil your pan. You don't want your cornbread to stick. If you've never cooked with a Dutch oven before, they're inexpensive, they last forever. There's all kinds of, of uh, training and YouTube and uh, other things that will teach you how to cook. And you never learn how to do it unless you make some mistakes. So cooking in a Dutch oven is a lot of fun, so you gotta give it a try. Well, you talk about durable. These things came across the prairie, so <laughs> I think- That's the, right, uh, this is what, there were two things that the, uh, that the settlers feared most running out of food and tooth problems <laughs> and they, the mainstay of cooking on the trail in the old days was of course the Dutch oven. So how many are you putting on the top there Tim? Uh, 15 are going to go around the outside and you actually want them around the perimeter because the heat actually distributes more even that way. A Dutch oven cooks from the top down and one of the big mistakes that amateurs make or the first time you try it is thinking that you have to have a lot of heat on the bottom and you really don't. You need some uh, but most of the heat is cooking from the top of the lid down into whatever you're cooking. Uh, in this case cornbread, biscuits, I mean you can make some of the best tasting food in the earth on your, on your uh, Dutch oven. And that's it. It's going to go for 25 minutes, and we're going to take a look at it and see how it looks. Mm -mm -mm. Another one of my favorite, favorite things to do here at the ranch, of course, nothing says summer like a blackberry cobbler cooked in a Dutch oven. Don't you agree? I agree. All right, so I use a liner uh, on mine because I don't want any of the sweet taste. You never wash a Dutch oven after you've cooked meat and stuff. You just never wash it. You just rinse it out and, you, and it, it's part of the patina. It's part of the flavor. So the, the liner keeps the, the sweetness of the dessert from taking on any meat flavor. So I always use a liner for the cobbler. First in, six cups of fresh blackberries. Mm -mm -mm. And uh, Take them, smooth them out. Should be an inch or so thick on the bottom. I'm using a 12 inch lodge uh, Dutch oven here, but you can use a 10 inch. This will work with a 10, a 12, or a 14 inch Dutch oven. So, Next up is a cup and a half of sugar. Got to have gotta sugar. sugar. Got to have sugar. So you sprinkle that evenly all over the cobbler. And then we take our spoon and we kind of level it out, make sure everything's even because when we put the moisture to it, we want it to get all sides of it. Up next is a cup and a half of flour, regular old bread flour. And again, we smooth that out over so there's no clumpy areas and get it distributed perfectly around the cobbler. Looks like a fruit dessert lasagna. Ooh. Ooh. And then goes a special mixture, cake mix, on top of that. We're using a yellow cake mix today, uh, but you can use white cake mix. Uh, probably chocolate isn't going to go with blackberries, but you never know. That's the good part of making things. You know, I do have to tell you, my wife was here some years ago when you've made these in the past. and It's a memory. <laughs> it is. I mean, she says that was delicious. It is so much fun. And then what really helps is a can of lemon lime soda. Now we use, uh, we use Mountain Dew here at the ranch. And uh, you spread that on evenly so that it all soaks down in there and gets all the way down to the bottom. One whole can in there. And there's really no mix to this. You just put it layer by layer by yeah, layer. By and layer. And let That's the right. cook and do the thing. Yep. So then we we just stir it up so that everything is a little bit on the moist side as we get down in there. And you don't want to mash up the the blackberries. You can just do a 
a quick stir here so that all that moisture gets down inside. And once the heat hits it, it'll it'll get everything together anyway. Mm -mm. I just got a uh, a hunger pain just waiting in anticipation, especially for your cornbread. Mm. It's probably cooking right now. There you go. I think it is. Oh, that looks delicious. All right, so we'll, we're almost almost ready here for the for the end. No, of course you could substitute any berry you want for that. Oh, too, sure. You? you could use raspberries. You could use blueberry, anything you yeah. want. Yeah, blueberries would be really good. And uh, this is what we have. So now, going on the top is uh, brown sugar. And you just spread, sprinkle the brown sugar around the top. You don't want to mix it in because you want it to sit on the top of your cobbler. And this is uh, two-thirds of a cup of uh, brown sugar. And it's, we use d uh, dark brown sugar in the cherry bourbon barbecue sauce, but we use light brown sugar here on the cobbler. That's almost going to give it like a sugary crust. Oh, it? yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh. People pay $1,000 a piece for this when it's done. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so now we're going to dot with butter on the top. That's another match made in heaven, butter, oh. and, butter and sugar. Like we said, you put butter on anything, it's automatically better that minute. Okay, so now we're ready to go to the fire. Oh, we're going to cook this uh, cobbler on the, in the Dutch oven for about 30 minutes on our charcoal fire, or on our briquette fire. So let's head over to the fire pit and get her started. All right, we're at the fire and we're going to fire up our, our blackberry cobbler. Uh, we're going to do 10 briquettes on the bottom and 14 on the top. And that should take us right up to 30 minutes. Now we're not going to open this until 30 minutes exactly. And then we'll check it. If it's nice and golden brown uh, when we check it, then that's fine. We'll pull it off the fire. If it's still a little doughy on top, we'll give it another 10 minutes or so and we'll finish her right off. We'll set that down on there. All right. Timmy's got 10. That's 10. 10 down. 14 to go. 14 on the edge. Two. All right, we'll, uh, we have uh, cornbread on there about to be finished. We have our blackberry cobbler uh, ready to go. And uh, in 30 minutes, we'll come back and check on that. Now, what do we make in here, Jim? Well, we're going to show the folks how we at the ranch here make cherry bourbon barbecue sauce from scratch. The best by far barbecue sauce you'll ever have in your whole life. And you know the big mistake people make is they try to make barbecue sauce with ketchup. That's right. That doesn't work. No. That doesn't work. So what we do is we start off with a stick of butter uh, in our turkey fryer here. Yep. And, uh, and then a cut up yellow onion. And we'll saute that down. And you know butter is one of the three B's. Yeah. Butter, bacon, and bourbon. And bourbon. It's a win. <laughs> it's a win. Well, that's how we do this. I, I, Tim and I have cooked this uh, cherry bourbon barbecue sauce for 150 people. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, on a few occasions. Yeah, and there was a and whole there's... bottle of bourbon in that last batch, though. That yeah. was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> it always comes out a little different, but it always is fantastic. Yeah, yeah we love it. We love it. So next up, we're going to add uh, a couple of cups of tomato sauce. Not ketchup, tomato sauce. And you don't want to use spaghetti sauce, you want just regular everyday tomato sauce. Normally we'd make that from scratch, but uh, we're in a little bit of a hurry today. So, <laughs> All right, so next up. Okay, give that a stir there, Timmy. I, I got to tell you, tomato and onion is a match made in Oh, heaven. it is. It really is. Absolutely. It's one of those things that... All right. Next up is two cups of brown sugar. Brown sugar. Brown sugar improves everything. We use it in our rub. That's a little bit of the secret part. Now, if you don't have brown sugar, you could... You could uh, accent a little with some molasses. Right. We've you used molasses before. We've, uh, yep. There's a little bit of variation every time. 
Next up is a clove of fresh garlic. Fresh garlic. Two tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Now that'll give it a little tartness, but you don't want that vinegar from ketchup. I mean, the lemon juice, especially that fresh lemon juice, Ooh. is it, you can't beat that. Don't buy your lemon juice in a bottle. There's just something about coarse salt versus regular table salt. Two tablespoons of coarse salt. And finally, before we put the cherries in, up next is our, our triple top secret, made out of fresh black crack, cracked pepper, an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and a tablespoon of powdered mustard. You gave the secret away. I know. <laughs> And we are just about simmered down here, Jim. I'm getting hungry. Um, we got some cherries we gotta add now. We do, it's time to add those cherries. We're gonna add about three quarters of the cherries uh, and then mash them down in here while we're stirring them up. And we'll save about a quarter of them out to put in there so the barbecue sauce is nice and thick and chunky with beautiful fresh cherries. And look at the juice oh, in yeah, there too. Yeah, look at that. All right, well, okay. <laughs> well. There's two left. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna mash these down just a little bit. Release all that good cherry juice down. Break in them there. up. Yeah, you don't want all of them whole. You want some chunks, some little bit of yep. break up in there. But you want to get all that flavor out of them too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing better than cherries. Well. There's nothing better than a cherry barbecue, too. There's something about it. It really just, it really goes with a barbecue. There we go. All right, let's put in our last 25% there. There we go. So now we're gonna cook this down for a couple hours anyway, right? At least a couple Low hours. Slow and down. slow. And by the time we're done, it'll be time for the secret ingredient. Should we tell them or no? Oh, we'll hold off on that. All right, we're gonna, Sorry, I have to hold off on the secret ingredient. <laughs> Absolutely the best time. The cornbread's done, I think, isn't it? I think we're going to try to see what it All looks right, like. All right, Timmy, here's the reveal. Oh, oh yeah, boy. look at that. Ooh. That looks gorgeous. That is going to be and you great. See, you see how it's starting to pull away from the side? Yep, yep. So that, I think, is just about perfect. All right. All right, we will get this off the fire and we will let it cool. Okay, now we're ready to put the final touches on this cowboy cornbread. And what we're going to do, we're going to take a fork and we're going to pretty much just go around. Now that it's cooled and set a little bit, we're going to perforate it. How deep are you going there, buddy? Oh, not too deep. Just to get through the surface here. Okay. All right. Um, and it, it comes out kind of porous as it is. so. We, we just want to go lightly and make enough so... You going to pour rum on there? We could do <laughs> rum, but what we're going to do is we're going to put some wildflower honey on this. Ah, oof. And, and just, it's going to drizzle and down it, inside it will. there. It, what it's going to do is it's still warm. So over the course of a few minutes, this honey mm -hmm. is going to mm -hmm. soak mm -hmm. right down into it. Oh, yeah. Now, some people, they, they uh, maybe drizzle some sugar on the top of the cornbread, mm -hmm. but I'll tell you, if you use honey, especially a wildflower honey, it, it gives it just up. a, a yeah. whole different dimension. Ooh. And over the course of a couple minutes, that's going to drain right in there, yeah. and this Ooh. is going to be ready to enjoy. Wow. That's Tim's cornbread. Can't wait. It'll be great. Well, well you, you yeah. just couldn't wait any longer. We have to get to the secret ingredient. We just couldn't wait any longer. <laughs> secret ingredient is a little uh, honey bourbon and a little black cherry bourbon. So people ask us, how much, Tim? And what do we tell them? There's really no telling how much. <laughs> um, 
some batches we've used almost the whole bottle. Yeah, we have. Well, you remember, the alcohol cooks off. Right. But the flavor stays there. We know how to live here at the Salmon Ranch. Oh, that does smell good. Mm -mm. Once we cook that down, the alcohol's gone from it, but it just leaves that cutting edge taste of cherry bourbon barbecue sauce here at the ranch. Well, if you've ever had cherry soaked in bourbon, you'll, you'll know what kind of flavor profile is actually going to go into this. Absolutely. Oh, this is the most exciting time, right, Tim? This is the great reveal. This is this brisket that we've been cooking low and slow on that Komodo Joe grill for the past 15 hours or so. Now's the big reveal. Now, how did we get this far, though? Now, what we did is after it got up to about 160 or about six hours, uh, we checked the brisket and you saw that the bark was nice and just where we wanted it. So we took it off and we wrapped it. And we wrapped it in peach paper, butcher paper. And it continued to cook through the stall, which is when everything starts evaporating out of the meat and changing consistency. And then it kept going right on up until we reached our target temperature. And after that, we actually got it off the grill, wrapped it in a towel, and let this bad boy rest for about three, four hours. Yeah, we did. And you can go anywhere between two and four hours. If, if it's ready a little early and you're still planning a meal, you can do that. Just wrap it in a towel, put it in a cooler, and that's where this just came from. So we're ready to find out just how good we did. The biggest mistake some people make is not letting that brisket, they're so excited that they don't let it rest. You have and to let when it you rest. pull that off the grill and you bring it down here, an hour minimum on the rest. And that's oftentimes the difference between a good juicy brisket and a brisket that's tough. That's right. All right, so here we go. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It's like opening a Christmas present. Open a Christmas present. <laughs> pull that towel out of there. There you go. All right. Oh boy, look at the juice on that. Mm. Nice and moist. That's what we're looking for. The holy grail of cooking is a brisket. And when it's done right, there's nothing better. Oh boy, look at that. When you cut a brisket, you always want to cut it across the grain, never with the grain. If you cut it across the grain, it stays in one piece and you push on it and the juices just come rolling out the side of the piece you cut. Now if you look at that, look at the puddle of juice that's right there still yeah. with the meat. It's, mm. it's fantastic. All right, here we go. Let's see how nice and tender we are with this oh, brisket. Boy. Now you push on there and you see all those juices coming out of there. <laughs> That is about as tender a brisket as exists in this country. So now we're going to be feeding the Wranglers here at the ranch here in a little bit. But I think it's only a part of the deal that we try it out, don't you think, Oh, Tim? yes. Oh, yes. Now look at that. Look mm. And look at the bark. You see the bark? Yeah. And you see mm. there's, there's the smoke ring right there? Everything you want. That is one tender brisket <laughs> right here. <laughs> All right, Tim. It's been 30 minutes. It's been this 30 minutes. should be ready to go. Let's Time to see. reveal this blackberry cobbler. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, look at that. Oh, golden brown. Fresh roasted blackberries. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that looks good. Look at that. All right. We've got our meal almost set, Tim. We got to set the table. We got to set go. the table. All right, buddy, we finally made it. We did it. We got everything cooked today. Folks, thanks for joining us at the Salmon Ranch today. We appreciate it. We cooked a brisket for 15 hours, low and slow, and it's as tender as you can't even imagine. I hope you're hungry, but you don't have to be hungry when you get this brisket. We you did cherry me. bourbon barbecue <laughs> sauce. We did chilies on the chili grill and Hungarian peppers. Salt potatoes. Yep. Tim did a wonderful 
Cowboy cornbread. Cor cowboy cornbread with jalapenos and actual corn in the cornbread. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. And then to finish it off, we have a beautiful blackberry cobbler we did in the Dutch oven on the fire. So we're going to dive in and everybody here is going to have a feast here at the Salmon Ranch. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for coming to the Salmon Ranch today for a fine meal. We really appreciate it. Appreciate all the work the Wranglers and, and all the people did here at the ranch today. It was a great meal with good friends, and we'll see you on the next Delicious. one. Thank you. Thank you. Here, here.